Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how I use Z-Remesher in my workflow to create nice sculptable topology. Obviously, topology is one of those necessary evils in any game art pipeline. When it comes to sculpting characters in ZBrush, there are tons of ways to get your sculpt started, and most of them can put topology second and sculpting first, which as an artist is the way it should be. Unfortunately, when making characters with tons of high quality detail for production purposes, topology is a must. So in this video, I wanted to show some of the quick workflows that I use with Z-Remesher to get the best quality topology to sculpt on top of. Here we have a model that I've been working on. Up to this point, I've been sculpting with Dynamesh, which is how I tend to start a lot of my characters to get them to a good base. But the issue is that at a certain point, I want to have a little bit more control over my subdivisions to start to refine my forms a little bit more. The best way to do this is with clean topology. Obviously, there's a couple of routes that we can go to to get clean topology. The first being that we can create a custom topology in something like Maya or another external 3D package, which tends to be not the most time efficient for what I'm trying to do at this point in my production process. The other choice is going to be using auto retopology, which at this stage, I don't need 100% final geometry, but I want something that's easy to manipulate as well as has nice quadding to start sculpting on top of which Z-Remesher does. Also, one thing that is nice to have at this point is a little bit more control over where the poly rings end up. So I can create quicker selections and I don't have to worry quite as much about things like spirals that Z-Remesher can produce. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I accomplish that control using Z-Remesher. So the first thing that I like to do is using the mask lasso brush, I mask out where I want edge loop to occur. So I'll mask out the head, and once I have that, I'm going to come down here to my polygroup menu and hit group by mask. This is going to create a polygroup that's going to tell Z-Remesher to make a clean edge around these two points. So once I have that, I'm going to start throwing polygroups around the areas that I want loops to be at. I most likely tend to stick to areas that have things like joints, so shoulders, elbows, knees, hips, or just any other areas where I want a nice clean loop at. Once I've gone through and established my polygroups, next I'm going to start running the Z-Remesher. For this part, I like to duplicate my original Dynamesh so that I can reproject that model into my new quadded out mesh. So to do that, we'll come over here and select Duplicate. Next, inside the Z-Remesh dropdown, I set it to half and make sure that Keep Groups is checked and Smooth Groups is set to 1. Then we'll hit Z-Remesh. Now we can see our clean topology which is a little too dense, but we do have some of that edge control and areas around the polygroups, which is what I wanted. So let's just go ahead and hit Z-Remesh a couple more times to get something a little bit lower. Usually I'll take the mesh down as low as I can while still keeping the shape of the model, but the lower that I can get, usually the better so that I have a little bit more ease of use when manipulating my geometry. Now, once I have my new low poly, I want to make sure that my original Dynamesh is turned back on so that I can start reprojecting the detail back into this new low poly mesh. When reprojecting, I like to go level by level on each subdivision level. This usually just gives me a little bit of an easier time to make sure that none of my polygons snap to surfaces that they shouldn't, and it just gives me a little bit of a cleaner result. And just like that, now I have a nice quadded out mesh. I have polygroups for nice selections, I have subdivisions so that I can refine my forms a little bit easier, and I have nice edge loops in a lot of different areas. So if I wanted to call this good, I could continue to move on with my sculpt and refine further, which I will do, but at a certain point I'm going to get to the detailing stage of my model. And because this model is one contiguous mesh, that means that I will most likely only subdivide the geo so much before it starts to be a little bit more taxing on my computer. So because I went ahead and created a couple of nice edge loops to select, I can use this to my advantage when starting to split off pieces of the model to allow me to take the model to a little bit higher resolution for each individual piece that I split off. This is where the nice edge loops come into play. I can start to select areas like the chest and I'm going to add in a couple of additional edge loops in all directions to grow the mesh past where the seams are. This is going to allow me to work on cross seam areas between the models a little bit easier. I can just project that information into the next model 
where the seam lines up and I can use that as a starting point for the next model so that I'm not having to work between the two edges and try and match what the area is supposed to look like. So the last advantage and why I use this method is because some of the geo that I was able to create turns out to be a great starting point for me to start to create my low poly model off of. I have a couple of areas with really nice loops and a good set of polygons already established, so I'm able to use that as somewhat of a starting point. Let me go ahead and reiterate that I don't use this geometry for my final low poly, but it is a great place to start building that cage off of. And that's how I use Z Remesher in my workflow inside ZBrush. So thank you for watching up to this point. Hopefully you found some of this stuff useful. For some future videos, I do plan to take this character a little bit further by demoing some of the different processes that I do for things like detailing. So if that interests you, let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to see any future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.